friends. Um, today I'm back again with one more small quick uh, series that uh, basically is talking about how to use file fuzzing and um, something that automates file fuzzing. In the earlier scenarios, we have seen me trying to drag and drop files and, uh, and exploit them, which is one, one way of doing it. Uh, but in certain cases, it might not be the most uh, efficient way of fuzzing. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, most of these uh, you know, executables provide you the option of you know, launching something from command line. So for example, you can launch Internet Explorer and type in the URL besides it. And Internet Explorer will take that URL and redirect to a specific uh, website. So similarly, uh, none of these players do have the option of opening either their .wav or their playlist files, which is uh, MP or you know, PNS. So I'm going to use a view player example uh, in this case, which basically is exploitable and is exploited on exploit DB. Um, in this case, what my goal is, is to show you this crash.exe. And this is available on the internet. I think I found this um, somewhere on the internet, which um, indicated. So you can search for that. If not, um, I can provide it to you if you send me an email or something like that. Uh, but basically, what the crash.exe does is um, provides you with three options. One is a part to the app, one is the number of milliseconds that that app should be read or the program should wait before killing that specific app and then any extra arguments. So in this case, what I've done is um, I have created a basically an M3U file. Uh, and I guess one thing I missed out was this. Uh, so basically in this case, I'm looping over using Windows command line. Um, there are only two files in this specific folder which have caused a crash. So what I, I plan to do is uh, produce a crash. Um, and the good part about crash.exe is that it does give you a little bit of ins um, indication of what instruction or how the instruction registers look. Um, so you can look at different registers including EIP which is what which is what we want to control. And so um, basically all you have to do is write it in a loop, call the specific program, which is a part of the executable, the number of milliseconds I'm waiting. I'm waiting basically four seconds and then the point uh, to the M3 point. So let's see. And you can see that, uh, you know, in both the cases, it ran the specific, uh, you know, program. Uh, and then you can see that exception caught at this, at EXL, and you can see that uh, mainly uh, EDP has this specific value as well. Uh, so basically, exception caught at is indicating that this is the value in EIP. And you can see that EDP also has this value, which means the stack frame is probably you know, getting, sorry, is getting uh, sort of filled up with that specific value. And we can also see ECX can be controlled as well. And just to show you that how does it look in the reality scenario, this is just helpful when you're doing you know thousands of test cases and want to make sure that um, if, if anything gets crashed, you, you, you can know about it. Obviously, you could um, redirect the output to a file so that you can you know start the puzzle and then just go out for an hour or two hours and then come back. So I'm just going to do the same thing again. This is and you know these fuzzing files have been created by um, Sally. You can create fuzzing files in any way, yeah. so that that's a point that you can use any other puzzles. So I'm just going to quickly show um, the same output. I just want to make sure that it, you know, people understand, especially the ones who are new to this this aspect of exploit writing, they understand what's happening. Um, and so view player has been opened. I'm just going to drag and drop this file from the line, and I'm going to drag the first file. And we can see that this results in the ID441. ECX over here has the same thing, and EDP also has um, the same value. And that's what the specific crash uh, was indicating. So this is again a simple vanilla buffer overflow exploit, but um, it's it's worth understanding how you automation because that does make the life a lot more easier. All right, friends, that's pretty much it. Thanks again.